Hello and welcome everyone to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We are thrilled to have you with us today. We've got a great group of institutions, but before they get us started, I just have a few housekeeping announcements to go over. First of all, your camera and your microphone are off today, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you do have a Q&A button on your screen, and you can use that at any time to submit your questions to our presenters. You don't have to wait until a certain institution is presenting. If you have questions for any and all of our institutions today, go ahead and use that Q&A function throughout the whole event. This is one of many different sessions happening. We've got another uh, session taking place immediately after this event, and then a whole list of uh, additional institutions tomorrow. So make sure you take a look and sign up for additional events. And then of course, this presentation along with all of the others are being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com forward slash Pennsylvania. I will put that link in the chat for you all. But right now we are going to go to our main event, which is kicking it off with our institutions. Starting today, we have Wilkes University. Take it away whenever you are ready. Thank you so much. Let me just get my screen share here. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Maureen Iskra. I am one of the admissions counselors with Wilkes University, also a very proud 2010 communication study graduate. Um, what I'm going to talk about today, of course, is Wilkes. Uh, a little bit about us. We're located in northeastern Pennsylvania in a city called Wilkes. Uh, we have 2,500 undergraduates from 31 states and 15 different countries. Some, some, some stats about us, um, our average class size is 21. We have a uh, 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio and a, a very broad mix of professional liberal arts, science um, programs with 46 majors, minors, and, and pre-professional programs. Uh, we are a, a, a small school located in the city of about 40,000. So it's not a small city, but it's also not, um, you know, New York or, or Philadelphia. Um, this is just a, I'm going to have some pictures scattered throughout here. I'm going to talk a little bit about the admissions process. You can apply to Wilkes um, for fall of 21 still. Uh, we're still accepting applications if you are by chance interested. Um, August 1st, uh, will the application will open for fall of 22 we we are on the common app and as well as of course the wilkes.edu slash apply um so we do not prefer one over the other you can um use the application fee waiver of admissions i'll throw that in the chat after we do require official high school transcripts be sent from your guidance office uh we also do accept SATs and ACT scores, but we are test optional for all majors for fall of 21 and fall of 22. There are some programs, though, that we have that require additional application materials. Um, that's our performing arts, along with the guaranteed seat pharmacy program. Reach out to me. I can certainly tell you more about that. Um, we give uh, financial aid. We are a um, private university, so we give need-based aid as well. So there are merit scholarship, which is based off of your um, GPA up to $25,000 uh, per year. If you are local to the Luzerne or Lackawanna County area, we also have a hometown advantage award, $2,000. Um, and those are um, based off of your academic achievements. And all students are encouraged to apply for the FAFSA. Um, and if there's any questions about that, again, feel free to, to reach out uh, to me about that. Okay. I'm going to send this in the chat. This is just some ways that you can explore Wilkes on our Facebook, um, social media, and of course, visit campus if, if you are interested. Beautiful aerial view. A little bit about campus life. Um, we have 23 Division three sports. Tons of clubs and organizations that are related to your major, but also sports, faith, culture, diversity, lots of leadership opportunities. Um, our public safety, we're a very safe campus. Um, we're also uh, our own police force, um, which is, is um, not because anything has happened, but just um, to give us a little bit more clout in, in the area. In regards to student life, again, a range of programs, services, and activities. Um, there's various mentorship programs, extracurriculars, tons of social events, um, opportunities for uh, community service, 
and, and leadership and, and civic engagement. We're very, very strong with civic engagement within the Wilkes-Barre Scranton area. Um, of course, our academic advising, career advising, counseling, um, academic support services, health and wellness services, um, mental health counseling, that is, is something that's important to um, the university as well. So all of that is available. Um, a little bit about residence life. Um, all freshmen uh, are required if you are with that within, not within 50 mile radius of the university to live on campus for your four, um, the first two years and you are guaranteed housing for all four years. Uh, we do have a variety of styles, uh, dorms for freshmen, mansion style, tradition, suite style. Um, so probably one of the only times maybe in your life you'll get to live in a mansion. So um, I will send a video of, of that as well. This is just an example of, of one of the, the outside of the dorm. So I am going to um, send my contact information in the um, chat. And um, I, I'll, I'll finish with this last beautiful view um, of campus. And uh, I, appreciate everybody's patience because I know I talked really fast because I only had six minutes. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have about the university. Um, and um, uh, thank you. Awesome. What a great way to get us started today, Wilkes University. Thank you so much. We are going to turn it over now to St. Joseph's University whenever you are ready. Hi, everyone. My name is Brad Simon. I serve as one of our assistant directors for undergraduate admission here on Hawk Hill, as we call St. Joseph's University. I personally work with those coming from Philadelphia, but I will be here to help you today. And once we get you guys connected to Hawk Hill community, we'll be able to get you to your assigned counselor. That counselor is gonna be the one who will support you throughout the entirety of your search. So student, family, whoever's involved in this, we're gonna be there to kind of answer all the questions for you. But for now, just a quick highlight of what you're gonna find on Hawk Hill is that we're a mid-sized school, student body of about 4,100 undergraduates who represent all 50 states as well as 50 nations. And we do have graduate and doctoral programs. So as a full campus community, we're still under 8,000 individuals. Um, and that really helps you hopefully to have small classroom sizes averaging at 23 with great student faculty engagement. This is a good opportunity for you to really get all of that expertise from some of the best in the industry. But beyond that, our career development center and as well as our alumni network are there to support you. Now, outside of the classroom, I also wanna talk about the extracurricular involvement. We offer 20 division one athletic programs as well as club and intramurals. A unique feature of, of St. Joe's is that we have the longest running collegiate tradition. Our mascot is the hawk and it's always in motion. We have this belief, the hawk will never die. So if you ever see the mascot, at least one wing is flapping at all times, that individual actually receives a full tuition scholarship. But that idea of the hawk will never die is something that you find across every member of our campus community from students to faculty to staff. As a Jesuit institution, we have this belief that you have the fire within you. We're gonna be there to help you to find your passions. But once you figure that out, you're really gonna be able to go out and really set the world on fire as St. Ignatius once said. Now, this is a stepping stone. I also wanna mention that, that we're there to help you find that next phase of your life. So looking at our class of 2020, 92% of those graduates were employed full-time, had gone on for additional education or committed to the armed forces or a volunteer-based program within six months of their graduation. And over 65% of them actually left our university with either a double major or multiple minors. All of this is at your discretion. And as a major blind institution, you really get to figure this out. And I'll talk about that in a second. I'm not gonna highlight all of our programs, but we have some unique options with actuarial science, autism behavioral studies, food marketing, and so many more. And you have access to all of these with our, uh, major, our major blind admission process. So you have so much extra time to figure out what's the right fit for you or you know, do you want to switch from psychology to biology over to marketing all within this year? You're going to be fine. And we do have a lot of 4-1 programs. So four years to get your bachelor's degree and just one more year to get your master's in that field. So biology, business, computer science, education, and that's a growing number of, of programs there. The process to apply is very easy. 
You can use the St. Joseph's app or the Common app. There is the one general personal statement in there, but no supplemental questions or essays involved. And then we do require a letter of recommendation and an official transcript at a minimum. But additional letters of recommendation are welcome. You can send us a mixtape, come for an interview. You get to share your story. We have a belief of cure personalis, care for the whole being. So it's important that we get that full story of who you are, and that does not require SATs or ACTs by any means. Even without those, you are automatically considered for admission and for merit-based scholarships, all without any other action but applying and sending in those two additional required pieces. We have our own set of specialty scholarships centered on STEM, science, speech and debate, performing arts, and more. But as I mentioned earlier, your admission counselor will be your financial aid counselor, and they can help you through that process to figure out how this all pieces together. Your first opportunity to apply will be by November 15th for both early decision, which is a binding agreement or early action. Non-binding, you'd still have till May 1st to weigh those options and work with us. And more importantly, connect with St. Joe's. We wanna really bring you here as a family to get a good feel of what we can offer you, especially for the fact that we have a unique campus. We sit on 125 acres. Part of that is in Philadelphia County and part is in Montgomery County. So it feels suburban, but it is a city school. One train stop away, you're at the heart of Philadelphia. So access to research opportunities, cultural experiences, part-time jobs, internships, or even cooperative education, which is real life, full-time paid experiences that we help you to find predominantly in business, but there's a growing number there. We wanna help you to really explore the full package that we can offer, not just on our beautiful campus of Hawk Hill, but that extended campus of Philadelphia. Coming up in the future, you connect with us. So come for a daily tour or our discovery day on one of our upcoming Thursdays, all of that can be found at sju.edu forward slash visit. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. And I hope you have an amazing time. Follow up with us as much as you need. And I'll send my contact details in just a moment. But thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, St. Joseph's University. We're going to hear next from Washington and Jefferson College. As they get their presentation all loaded, I want to remind everyone that that Q&A function is live. So go ahead and get your questions in at any time. Okay, take it away, Washington and Jefferson College. So I'm just going to jump right in. I know I have a lot of information. So just like everybody else, I'll include my contact information in the chat at the end. Um, but WNJ was founded in 1781 as two separate colleges, and we merged together in 1865. Um, so WNJ has been around for quite some time, and there is a lot of history on our campus that we are very, we all enjoy a lot. Um, we're nicknamed the Presidents, so that is our mascot, the Presidents. And our college motto is Junk de Juvent, which means thriving together. We are a small private liberal arts and sciences college, so we offer, or we have about 1100 students total on our campus. We have a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Our average class size is about 15 students and almost 75% of our classes have less than 20 students in them. So if you're looking for that one on one time with your professors, advisors, you'll definitely find it here at WNJ. Um, also, almost all of our professors have terminal degrees, which means they have gone as far as they can in their area of study. So they truly are experts in the areas that they're teaching, um, which is you know, great for a student in their major. Uh, we have over 30 majors, over 30 minors. Uh, we also have five pre-professional programs and a number of concentrations and emphases. So you really do have the opportunity to do what you want to do in your four years at WNJ and take on as many or as little academic programs as possible. Um, our top five most popular majors are business administration, accounting, economics, psychology, and political science, but we of course have students in all areas of the college. We also, like I said, offer some pre-professional programs, so engineering, education, pre-health, and pre-law. Engineering is a 3-2 program. We have four partnership schools across the country. Education, if you're looking for elementary, middle, or high school level, we also have a number of certifications that you can pick up throughout your time as well. And then pre-health and pre-law, if you're looking to go on to any type of allied health school, pre-physical pre -physical therapy, pre-occupational therapy, pre-physician assistant, or pre-med, um, or pre-law if you're looking to go on to law school after graduation. 
Both of those programs are basically what we're known for here at WNJ. They've been very successful. We've had an over 90% placement rate in those areas for about 20 years now. Um, so a lot of our students do come for those two um, areas in, and all of the other academic programs that we talked about. Um, the Magellan Project is unique to WNJ and it's an opportunity for freshmen, sophomore and junior students to bas basically develop their own passion project anywhere in the world and the college will fund students to complete that project. So whether you have an idea in mind of something that you wanna research or if you find an internship anywhere in the world, the college will fund you up to $3,000 to pay for your housing, your meals, your transportation. Um, if it's an unpaid internship, give you a little money to spend over the summer. Whatever it may be, you develop your own project and your own budget and the college will fund you to complete it. Um, you can do it up to three times if you want to and it doesn't have to go along with your major. So it can be something that's just interesting to you, um, academic or non-academic. About 40% of our students study abroad and the Magellan Project is just one of the ways to do that. We also offer J-Term and semester in year-long experiences. J-Term is a 10-day mini semester during the month of January. That's optional for all students, but we do offer a lot of travel opportunities during that time. You will go for about 10 days with a faculty member and a group of students. And there's always about 10 options to choose from. So you can do something different every year or just something that really catches your eye. Um, and then we also have semester and year long experiences. We have almost 40 partners in 20 countries across the world. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity to travel during your time at WNJ. In total, if studying abroad is something you really like to do, you can do three Magellans, four J term opportunities, and four semesters or two years abroad. Um, so a lot of our students do take advantage of the opportunity to continuously study abroad throughout their four years. We have over 70 clubs and organizations, including performing arts. So there's always something to do on campus, and there's always a different way to get involved on campus. We have 26 NCAA Division III sports and we're very competitive in our um, athletics. We also offer two holistic advising programs for all students as freshmen and seniors. You have access to our um, Career Services Center throughout your four years, but it is built into your curriculum, your freshman and senior year to do some career prep, but also to do some life preparation. You'll learn how to rent your first apartment, buy your first car, buy your first house, all of those different skills that most of the time you don't learn until you're actually doing it. So we try to prep you on that a little bit. 97% of our students are um, employed or continuing their education within six months of graduation. I mentioned our pre-health and pre-law stats um, and we had a 100% um, graduate school acceptance rate as well. Really quickly, I know I'm almost out of time, but our application does open on August 1st, like everyone else said so far um, in the session, but you can apply using the common application or using the WNJ leadership application. All we require is your transcript. Everything else is optional. We have been test optional for about six years now. So I like to plug that um, now that most schools are going uh, test optional. Here are our deadlines, early decision, early action, regular decision, or rolling admission. Regardless of when and how you apply, you'll receive your decision in two weeks. Here are our scholarships. All accepted students do receive a merit-based scholarship. It's all on the website too. Um, and just some important dates, August 1st, the application opens, October 1st, the FAFSA opens, and uh, May 1st is National Decision Day. And that's all I have. Awesome, thank you so much, Washington and Jefferson College. We're going to turn it over now to Savannah College of Art and Design. Take it away when you're ready. All righty, thank you so much. Give me one second, everyone. All righty. So my name is Brett Sherman. I'm an Assistant Director of Admissions for SCAD uh, based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm also a SCAD alum, graduated in 2016 from the Graphic Design Department. So today we're gonna learn a little bit more about SCAD, obviously uh, just a little bit. So if you guys have any, infer, uh, any questions at the end of the presentation, I'll throw my information and you can feel free to get in touch with me at any time. We'll get started. So SCAD was founded back in 1978. And really since then we've grown to become one of the most um, connected art and design universities in the country. The university has approximately 15,000 students representing all 50 states and more than 100 countries. In fact, 25% of the SCAD student population is international. With over 100 degree programs across uh, more than 40 majors and more than 75 minors, 
Um, we offer more programs of study and specialization than any other art and design university in the US. So we truly have a major for everyone, as you guys can see on the screen right here. Some of our top um, majors are animation, interior design, graphic design, film and TV, and fashion design. Now to talk about our locations, SCAD has locations in Atlanta, Georgia, Lacoste, France, Savannah, Georgia, and online via SCAD eLearning. So you can begin your years at SCAD Atlanta. When you're accepted to SCAD, you're accepted to all of our locations. So again, when you're accepted to SCAD, you can start at SCAD Atlanta in a thriving business and film production hub. You can venture to the peaceful scenic hills of Southern France to study at our study abroad campus of SCAD Lacoste. And then circle back across the Atlantic to the historic squares and cobblestone streets of beautiful Savannah, Georgia. And we also offer SCAD e-learning, which I'm sure you guys are totally sick of by now, but this is where uh, we have a campus available online wherever you feel comfortable studying. So during the short time that I have with you guys today, there are three things that I always like to talk about. Um, if you end up choosing SCAD, these will be very important. Those three things are gonna be your professors, technology, and also internships. So first up is our professors. All of our professors at SCAD have to have industry, ex industry experience to be able to work at our school. And all of our so all of our professors are masters in your major, and they all come with great knowledge as well as unmatched connections to the industry. Like Andrew Reevrab, who's the dean of school of entertainment arts, she was head of casting at CBS for twelve years. She casted The Big Bang Theory, NCIS, and How I Met Your Mother. Next point is going to be our technology. So technology is top notch at SCAD. Whatever they're using in the industry, you will be using at SCAD. So whether it be an AR or VR studio. Um, a green screen technology, sewing machines, again, all industry standard. You're going to be that much more prepared for your first job out of school and will not be learning anything new again once you get to that first job. Next is going to be our internship opportunities um, through SCAD Pro, which is our in-house internship. Um, basically, uh, it's where students dream up design solutions for global brands. Um, recently, students reimagined Disney resorts. Uh, pitched the future, future of advertising to Google and marketed driverless cars for Volvo. All of those three things kind of lead to this one number at SCAD, which is our alumni employment rate number. 99% of our spring 2019 alumni were either employed, seeking further education, or both within 10 months of graduation, with 91% of those students in a creative field. So obviously, these extraordinary numbers are a testament to the talented and ambitious students like you guys that come through SCAD but it also speaks volumes about the quality of a SCAD education. So no such thing as a starving artist at SCAD. Um, our SCAD grads come in with big dreams and end up working for major companies like Netflix, Chanel, Pixar, Apple, Spotify, Instagram, to just name a few. So if you're thinking, how can I begin my journey to SCAD? You guys can uh, begin while you're in high school. We have a few different summer programs that are available to you guys. Um, if you are a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior, we have a summer seminar, which is a one week long workshop style program where you can come down to campus. Usually this year it is um, going to be um, virtual. Um, that's where you can you know, gain a portfolio piece, meet students from all around the world. We also have a five week long course that's gonna be um, called our Rising Star Program. That's where you can be, again, part of five week long program where you're enrolled in two college level classes, all at half price tuition. And then we also have dual enrollment where you guys can take um, e-learning classes while you're in high school to get, get ahead of your studies as well. So quickly to talk about our admission process, um, we are on rolling admission here at SCAD. So you can be, actually begin your, your SCAD application as early as your junior year. Um, it's completely up to you, junior or senior year, you can start your application. Um, we have a very easy application process. It takes about 10 minutes to complete on our, on our website. You're giving us basic information about yourself. You don't need to have anything ready to go at the time of the application. Again, besides like basic information about yourself. Right after that, you're assigned your admission advisor. Your admission advisor is there to help you walk you through all of the next steps of the application. So you're not going to be playing like a guessing game of, you know, when do I submit this? When is this due? Um, your admission advisor is going to be helping you throughout that process. We look for a 3.0 GPA. Um, we look for a 1080 on the SATs or a 21 on the ACTs. We are officially test optional for next year. So optional, you don't need to submit those if you don't want to. If you feel proud about them, feel free to do so. At SCAB, we do not require the portfolio for acceptance, but instead we, we uh, look for it for a portfolio scholarship. We also offer some other scholarships as well that if you're interested, you can feel free to get in touch with me to ask about those. Um, that's basically our application process. 
Last thing I'm going to tell you about is our in-person tours and our SCAD days, our open house days that are available all summer and also into the fall. Um, I also have a, an information session in person in Philadelphia um, in two weeks. Next, uh, let's see, Jan um, June 19th is when that's happening. So if you're interested, feel free to get in touch. There's my information. I also put it in the chat. Thank you guys so much for your time. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Savannah College of Art and Design. Okay, we are going to hear now from Earlham College. I wanna give one final reminder that that Q&A function is open. So get your questions in before this session ends. Earlham College, we're ready for you. All right, sounds good. I'm glad my presentation is following the, the one about incredible visual design. I'm not sure mine's quite up to par, but I'll definitely do my best. Um, yeah, so my name is John Wolfgang. I'm an admissions counselor at Earlham College. I'm not actually the admissions counselor for Pennsylvania, but I am from Pennsylvania originally. So glad to, glad to be back repping PA. Um, so Earlham is a small private liberal arts college located in Richmond, Indiana. When we say small, we mean it. We floated about 800 students. Despite that, we have great representation amongst our student body. About 25% of our students are domestic students of color. Another 23% are international students. That international student population is among the top five every year in terms of small liberal arts colleges. So you really do get a global perspective while here at Earlham. We were founded in 1847 by Quakers. You don't have to be a Quaker to come here. Only about 10% of our students and faculty are, but we find it's really beneficial to kind of have those Quaker ideas because they're so unique that they, um, they're a constancy we can always fall back on, but they also go hand in hand with academics. And we do have really strong academics here as well. As far as the academic programs that we have, you can see them listed here. Um, in total, it's upwards of 60 different majors and minors. And then when you count in these things that we have called applied minors, that's another extra 20. So applied minors are really great. They're really unique. They let students dig into a topic um, and come at it from a lot of different angles. So for instance, we have one called anthrozoology. It's our most popular applied minor. And you're looking at human animal relations but from a biological lens, from a sociological lens, from an anthropological lens. So you get to just dig into any topic that you're really passionate about. Um, as far as our most popular majors and minors, um, anything to deal with medicine, right? Uh, neuroscience, biochemistry, biology, all of that is really popular at Earlham. Our med school placement rate is over double the national average. The president of the National Pre-Med Advisors Association is an Earlham professor. So really you're getting the best of the best when it comes to kind of med school prep. Our Japanese studies program is really, really popular as well. We have an established connection with Waseda University in Japan, which means we offer study abroad programs with them, but we also have a full double degree program where at the end of your undergraduate education, you get two uh, bachelor's degrees. And so that's really popular. Um, we have some more unique ones like peace and global studies, again, kind of building off that Quaker idea of really being peaceful, really um, doing good in the world. And so it's a major kind of design for students to really see how they can have those sorts of impacts. And then equestrian management, that's one of those ones that it doesn't matter to everyone, but the people it matters to, it really, really matters to. So I like to highlight that. We do have uh, an equestrian center, a horse barn on campus. So if you're interested in bringing your horse with you to Earlham, you definitely can. Um, our classroom experience, we find differentiates us even more than our academic offerings. The average class size is 13 students. The student to faculty ratio is nine to one. You really do form that personalized connection with your professor. And that's something that's facilitated by the fact that you're on a first name basis with your professor, right? That originally comes from the Quaker beliefs. We don't like using titles. It elevates people over each other. Um, but that means in the academic setting, right? You're a lot more comfortable asking questions in class. You're a lot more comfortable going to office hours. And we find that that's really essential for being able to dig in to the information that you're actually studying, getting really great letters of recommendation and getting access to internships and research opportunities, right? As far as taking advantage of those internships and research opportunities, we have something called the Earlham Advantage. The Earlham Advantage is guaranteed funding for an internship or research opportunity during every student's time here on campus. $5,000 worth of funding and students actually have to take advantage of it to graduate because we think it's so important. We understand it isn't as simple as saying, okay, here's some money, go figure out some way to spend it, right? If you don't know what you're interested in, or you don't know what that really looks like in the real world, then that money's not going to do you any good. So that's why we have career coaches available. We have an entire infrastructure in place to make sure that you can kind of dig into your passions and not only, you know, say, oh, okay, well, this might be a good fit for me in theory, 
let's get you applied for that. Let's get it budgeted out. Let's really help make it a reality. Kind of going tandem with that, we have a lot of off-campus study programs. So across the nation and across the world, we have 16 different entirely Earlham operated study abroad programs. In fact, um, over two thirds of our students participate in study abroad during their time here at Earlham. And it's entirely included within your tuition for the semesters that you study abroad. You don't pay anything extra out of pocket. It doesn't take away from your $5,000 in Earlham Advantage funding, right? So it truly is affordable for every student during their time on campus. It's not gate kept for just the wealthy students. As far as student life, we have a ton of different clubs and organizations because it's such a small community. It's really tight knit. The students love to get involved. They love to put on a lot of different events. Athletics, we have 17 men's and women's D3 athletic teams. We have a large uh, athlete population on campus, which means they're really well integrated in the community. We have a great healthy culture surrounding college athletics. And that's something that's just so, so valuable. As far as res life, we have guaranteed four year housing. You don't have to worry about fighting um, for housing, finding an apartment your senior year because we're kicking you off for a freshman. No, guaranteed housing at Cost the same all four years and it costs the same no matter if you're living in a single or a double or suite style or quad style. As far as the admissions process, pretty much just like everyone else here opens on August 1st. Um, we take the common app, we take the Earlham College application, just do the common app. It's a lot simpler. You can use it for a lot more schools, test optional during the pandemic, test optional outside the pandemic. Um, and then as far as merit scholarships, we have guaranteed merit scholarships for every student who applies anywhere from $20,000 to $30,000 a year for four years. And we offer a large amount of need-based aid. As terms of endowment for the number of students at Earlham, we're richer than two Ivy League schools. And so what that means is we can put together some fantastic packages for our students. So it really is great to be able to open the doors to uh, a high quality college education for every student, no matter their background. If you want to get in touch with me, I put some contact info in the chat, as well as a link to our admissions visit website. We have in-person visits all throughout the summer and fall. Um, but yeah, Susan is going to be your admissions counselor. But if you want to get in touch with anyone in admissions, you're more than welcome. All right. I hope everyone has a wonderful night. Thanks so much for being here. Fantastic. Thank you, Earlham College. Okay, our last presenter for this section of the event is Westchester University of Pennsylvania. Whenever you're ready, take it away. Thank you so much. Make it go in here. All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Emily Elmore. I work at Westchester University of Pennsylvania. Um, my presentation is going to look a little bit different. Um, I'm not an admissions rep, but I am a teacher. And um, I currently work at Westchester as the diversity, um, the director of diversity recruitment and education. Um, so I'm here to not only talk about the school, but to specifically talk about our teacher ed programs. Um, so students out there, parents out there, if you're thinking about possibly becoming a teacher, uh, this presentation is for you. So um, simply put, we are a teacher ed school. Um, we have a million other majors, but uh, historically speaking, we are known for, um, for educating and preparing teachers. Our teacher prep history is in the name. Uh, so all the way back in 1871, when we were founded, we were called the Westchester Normal School, which sounds kind of funny, um, but that just means that we were dedicated to teaching um, education norms or teaching practices. In 1927, we became the State Teachers College, again, with that strong emphasis on the education field. Um, and then along the way, we changed our name um, to a little bit more simplistic. Uh, Westchester State College in 1960, and then the title that you know today, Westchester University of Pennsylvania in 1983. Oops. Um, so again, I want to talk about some of our undergraduate degree offerings. Um, we have early and middle grades education, secondary education, which is actually what I'm, uh, what I'm certified in, and also special education. For early and middle grades, uh, this means that you wanna teach the young kids um, that your certification would be pre-kindergarten through grade eight. Um, this program is very proud of the fact that they offer field experience um, the very first semester, meaning that not only are you taking your classes, but you're going to have an opportunity to get into a real live classroom, as they say, to get to, um, to view things from the other end of uh, of the classroom, of what, what is it going to be like when I'm going to be the teacher. We also have a justice-focused community teaching program where you actually go into uh, schools in West Philadelphia. 
Um, and over 90% of graduates uh, in early and middle grades are actually in education related fields. So there's definitely a strong um, graduation rate and connection with the community. And then secondary education, this certification is grades seven through 12. Um, we're going to teach you the mastery of effective teaching practices, teacher knowledge. Your courses are going to make sure that you are more than prepared to, to run a classroom, to be a teacher, to go in, to learn your students, to connect with the students and to create engaging and powerful lessons. And then finally, special education. Um, there are a lot of different offerings, as you can see. Um, we have a BSED in special education, just a general certification, which is ranges from pre-K to 12. Uh, so you can teach in any of those grades. Then you can do a double major. Um, you can do special ed and focus on just pre-K to four or special ed and uh, middle grades, which is grades four through eight. You can also take special, special ed as a minor. Uh, you could focus on just special ed in general, autism education, and early intervention. So admission to teacher candidacy, once you've picked one of our um, teacher ed programs, you're on your way, you're taking your classes, um, you will be what's called inform formally admitted into teacher candidacy. So here's what you need. You need to be enrolled in teacher certification program. You're going to have earned a minimum of 48 college credits. Um, so, you know, a couple years into your work, you're going to apply for this. Uh, so you'll have a lot of these classes already under your belt. You need to keep your grades up. I need to earn a minimum GPA of 2.8, three credits in college level English comp, uh, three credits in literature taught in English, six credits in college level mathematics. You need to pass the basic skills test and uh, to, you need to receive the recommendation of your major department. And then of course, since you're going to be working with children, um, those under the age of 18, you do need to obtain required PA clearances. So I know this looks like a lot, but in a nutshell, this is you declaring your major in one of the teacher ed fields, taking your classes and taking them well, I like to say, keeping your grades up. Um, and as many of the other reps said tonight, um, there are teams of people that are here to help you, that are going to connect with you, um, and they're going to make sure that you're on the right path. You'll have an advisor who will look through um, to make sure that you're taking the right classes so that when you go to apply for formal admission to teacher candidacy, you're on the right track. Um, so that's the, the teacher ed part of it, and I'll touch back on that in just a second. Um, just general admission to WCU. We are looking that you have at least a B grade point average or better, that's a 3.0. We're looking um, for that you're taking college prep high school courses, that you're among the top 40% of your class. Um, and as others have mentioned, the SAT scores, um, that is currently optional. Um, but if you choose to submit those, we're looking for a 1060 to 1200. Um, so just to circle back, um, Again, I'm a teacher. Um, I think I got ahead of myself, but I taught for six years in Northeast Philly. Um, teaching is a part of my identity. I'm proud of it. Um, and I would be more than happy to talk with you more about that, um, of what it means to be a teacher, why it's such a rewarding profession. Um, so we would love to, again, talk more about you and I'll put my information in the chat. So thank you all so much. Take care. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Westchester University of Pennsylvania. And thank you to all of my colleagues who are here today sharing information about their campuses and programs. I am going to ask them all to join me on video here. And we're going to move into a very brief Q&A, taking advantage of having all of these experts in one place here. The first question I have for us today is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We're going to go in the same order, so I'll ask Wilkes University to kick us off. Thank you. Um, I think the advice that I would give to um, someone is to go and visit as many colleges as you can over like the summer, for example. Public, private, small, large, urban, suburban, um, and just get a good feel for what you're looking for. Um, and then figure out where you want to apply and then go back and visit for a personalized visit once you've been accepted. You do get a, a different feel 
uh, when you step onto a campus when you know um, it actually could be where you spend the next four years. Fantastic, thank you. St. Joseph's University, what is your advice? Take a little pressure off of yourself. I know this is a really big decision, but there's a couple things to think about. One, you have a lot of people who are around you to help you with this decision. We are all on this page here talking to you to support you. Hopefully you've got a family and a network of people who surround you. But the second piece is there's always a transfer process. Okay, we don't always get it right. So if you end up at a school and it just it's not giving you what you need or it's not the suitable situation, you can get to that right school and people will be there to help you to make the transition. All right, perfect. Thank you. Washington and Jefferson College. Grace? Yeah, I definitely echo what everybody else said, um, but I will add just to be open throughout the process and um, if you know what you want to study, that's great, but be open to looking in other areas too and looking at colleges that um, do allow you some time to figure out what you want to study throughout your four years so that you don't lock yourself into something, you know, when you're 17, 18 years old. So definitely be open to looking at the college as a whole and not just looking at the specific areas that you think that you're interested in right now because that may change. You want to look at student life, you want to look at living on campus, um, the area itself where the college is. There's just so much more than just what you plan to study in college. Great advice. Thank you. Savannah College of Art and Design is your advice. Yeah, I would just say to start the research process uh, sooner rather than later. Um, it gives you time to kind of check all the boxes, uh, make sure you have everything ready to go, you know, application wise. And also it reduces a lot of stress because I know this all can be a, a stressful time. And I, I mean, I remember it like it was yesterday. So um, just getting started with the application process or rather the research process um, sooner rather than later. Great advice, thank you. Earlham College, what is your tip? Yeah, uh, mine I'm stealing from another six by six I did and it's very pragmatic. Just start another email they use only for college stuff. It's really easy to just kind of, um, if you're using your school email, it might get caught in the filters. If you're using your personal email, it might get lost in the shuffle. So just kind of set up an email where you're like, okay, when I check this, I'm focusing on this sort of stuff. Practical advice is always welcome during this as well. Okay, Westchester University of Pennsylvania, we'll have you close this question for us. Oh, those are all really good answers. Um, I would probably just say, um, really take some time to think about what you're interested in. Um, even if it's something that you, um, that you think isn't super popular or something that, um, that, you know, that you might not make a million dollars, really think about what makes you happy. Um, and you might not know, but maybe just narrow it down and really be true to yourself. Um, Cause life is short and you have to be happy in your job. Absolutely. Well, incredible advice from all of our uh, panelists here today. I just want to thank all of you for taking some time to help us get to know a little bit about each of your respective campuses and programs and how unique they are and what they have to offer. I also want to thank all of our attendees who are here today, whether you are here live or you are catching the recording. I really hope that you were able to learn um, a little bit about these campuses and that you'll do some Googling after this, maybe some follow-up emails some uh, scheduling of campus visits or phone calls to learn more about each of these campuses. Um, as we close up here, just a reminder that this is one of many different sessions happening with this event. So we have a whole nother uh, day taking place tomorrow full of uh, campuses joining us virtually. And then there's still one session taking place yet this evening that you can hop into at the all of these sessions are being recorded though. So if you miss any sessions, you can always catch them at strivescan.com forward slash Pennsylvania. I will put that in the chat one more time. And the final reminder I have for everyone is that when you close this event today, you're going to get a very quick four question survey that's going to help us get on how we did and how to make these events better for you. All right, everyone, that's all we have. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care.